Hello everyone, welcome to BA Consulting Pro. This is episode 3 of our Power BI tutorial series. In today's video, we are going to learn about authentication with the data source. In today's video, we will learn about select an authentication method, set the level of authentication method, change the authentication method, connected with Azure Active Directory using the web and all data connectors. And at last, we will discuss about supported workflows. So let's get started. If you are over here for the very first time, please consider to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos. When you attempt to connect to a data source using a new connector for the first time, you might be asked to select the authentication method to use when accessing the data. After you have selected the authentication method, you won't be asked to select an authentication method for the connector using the specified connection parameters. However, if you need to change the authentication method later, you can do so. So the very first we are going to discuss over here is select an authentication method. For example, whenever you are trying to connect with the online application or any other online data source, that time you need to get that URL. And once you will get that URL, you need to use the OData field. For example, in Power BI, get data, you are going to select OData field. Different connectors show different authentication methods. And over here, for example, the old data field connector in Power BI Desktop or in Excel displays this kind of authentication method dialog box. So in this dialog box, you can see on your left hand side, there are the different authentication methods. Anonymous means you don't need to provide any kind of authentication like your, use, like your username, password or any token, etc. Windows going to use your Windows credential. Basic, it's going to simply ask for your username and password. Web API, if you have any token or something that in that case, you are going to use that. And at last is the organizational account. So this is organizational authentication that you can use it over here. If you are using a connector for an online app, such as the Power BI service or Power Apps, you will see an authentication method dialog box for the OData feed connector that looks like something like you can see on your screen right now. And as you can see, a different selection of authentication method is presented from an online app which you can see over here. And at the bottom of the screen, you can also see the authentication kind, like whether you want to use the anonymous, basic or organizational account. And you will also get an option to provide the on-premise data gateway along with the URL. Now we are gonna discuss about the set the level of authentication method. So what kind of level do we really need it to do so? And that depends what kind of data source you are trying to access, whether you want to access it on a folder level or just, you know, the complete just on the website level, which is the topmost level, or you have any other access required over there. For example, if we talk about the same URL that you can see on your screen, that is HTTPS, Contoso.com, then 2020 data, then list of countries, etc. In this case, you can see the default setting for your authentication method would be on the top level, that is HTTPS slash slash contoso.com. However, if you need further access, like you need a specific to a folder or something like generally we have access on folder level or subfolder level or the complete website or URL level. So we can do that kind of access and we can select over here and then we can select connect. Now let's discuss about change the authentication method, how we can change it. Well, I can show you in Power BI as well, but no need to go over there. I have already explained you in many previous videos, 
what are the options and settings and how to go into that and maybe in later videos when we need to do the demo definitely we will go into this one but over here we don't need so suppose you have already made a connection over there you have authenticated yourself and now somehow you need to change it so what you can do you can go to the options and settings into your power bi or if you are using the excel then go to the data tab or there you will find an option get data as you can see on your screen and there you will find the data source settings so click on that once you will click on that you will find another pop-up where you can change your settings over there just remember that over here if you will go into the edit settings you can edit your credentials over there if you want to delete you can delete that as well but underneath this the top dialog box you will see there are two other options on the main window at the bottom which is edit permissions and clear permissions so once you will click on the edit permissions you will get this top box but if you want to clear all those permissions like i have experienced in my personal work experience as well and many of you have asked me earlier like how to clear the permission so the second button you can use to clear the permission so that if you will try to connect again it's going to ask you the again the authentication and then you have to authenticate yourself now we are going to discuss about connecting with Azure directory using the web and O data connectors. In many of the cases, like when we have to authenticate ourselves, generally we do using Azure Active Directory because it's a one point solution. Though there are other methods as well, but generally in organizations, we prefer Azure Active Directory only when we are connecting with the Power BI or some other Azure accounts. So when connecting to a data source and service that require authentication through organization authentication or Azure Active Directory based authentication, in certain cases where the service is configured correctly, you can use the built-in web or all data connectors to authenticate and connect to the data without requiring a service specific or custom connector. So you don't need a service specific or a custom connector, you can directly use the Azure Active Directory to connect with that. Now let's see, suppose when you are trying to connect and in some cases you are getting an error. So what happened and how you are going to resolve this problem? So if you run into the error, we were unable to connect because the credential type isn't supported for this data source. Please choose another credential. This means that your service doesn't support this authentication type. So whatever service you are trying to get the data from there, it's not going to support that. And that's how you will get generally this kind of error. So how to resolve that? For that, what you can do, you can change it. Try to go for the anonymous or Windows or basic. So other alternative methods that are available over here. And once you will use, I'm sure you would be able to connect with your data source. Supported workflow. So supported workflow comes into the picture when you are going to connect with some services like for example CRM. One example of a supported service is working properly with organization authentication or OAuth is CRM. For example if you can see this URL on your screen how you are going to connect with it. So the very first step is just to connect with the OData feed you are going to enter your URL over here. Once you enter your URL, you are going to use an organizational account, which is OAuth, that is organizational authentication. You have to enter or your URL over here and you have to click on sign in. You can also select the sub part or sub folder or main folder if you would like to, because there is an option select which level to apply these settings to. So select it, sign in, and after that, you can save your credentials over here and start connecting. The last step would be the request succeeded with the authentication flow continues to allow you to authenticate successfully and you would be able to connect with your CRM system. However, you should note that when you select sign in in step two above, which is this step over here, when you are entering your credentials or signing in over here under organizational account, at that time, Power Query sends a request to the provided URL endpoint with an authorization header with an empty bearer token. And the request would be similar, which you are seeing on your screen right now under this blue box. The service is then expected to respond with a 401 respond with a www underscore authenticate 
header indicating the Azure Active Directory authorization URL to use. So basically it's for Azure Active Directory authentication. Now this response should include the tenant to sign in or common or if resource isn't associated with a specific tenant. So what you will get in return. So once you will do that, this is something you are going to get in return. In that case, Power Query can initiate the organizational authentication flow against the authorization underscore URL, the URL that you are asking to authenticate, which you can see over there, authorization underscore URI. Power Query requests an Azure Active Directory resource or audience value equal to the domain of the URL being requested. So first you will send a request to access the data and then you will get a response from the data source. This value would be the value you use for your Azure Application ID URL value in your API service registration. In our next video, we are going to discuss about SharePoint and OneDrive for business files import using Power Query. How Power Query is going to be used to get the data from these resources. Don't forget to connect with us and also don't forget to subscribe our channel, hit the bell icon and yes, follow us for more exciting videos.